Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down volume 3 of 100 Bullets, which covers the Hang Up on the Hang Low story arc. We are going to be introduced to a character named Loop Hughes. We are going to learn a little bit about his father. Agent Graves is going to be in the mix. There's going to be an attache case. There's going to be some gangsters. And it's a pretty solid crime noir tale. So let's dive into it. Volume 3 of 100 Bullets. 100 Bullets, Volume 3. Hang Up on the Hang Low, written by Brian Azzarello, art by Eduardo Riso. 100 Bullets, Issue 15, Hang Up on the Hang Low, Part 1 of 4. Our issue opens up in a shitty rundown bar in Philadelphia called Holly's Go Lightly. Inside the bar, a man named Lonnie is drunk. He's passed out on the bar counter. The bartender and owner of said bar is Holly, and she is getting a little bit annoyed with Lonnie. One of Holly's customers, Curtis Hughes, shows up. Curtis is an older man. He ushers Lonnie out of the bar, and then he goes over and kisses Holly. Curtis and Holly have a little bit of a relationship. Curtis asks Holly, slow night. Holly answers, Ken, place was packed just a few hours ago. Curtis asks, so you can make your rent payment? Holly, she then frowns. She most likely won't be able to. Curtis warns her, that's not good, Holly. Not good at all. Holly owes money to a gangster named Nino Rego. Curtis tells her, what you owe, it ain't like no bank. Interest, it ain't coming out of your wallet. It's coming out of your hide. Across town, we see the cops are investigating a gangland shooting. A little outside of the crime scene, we see two gangsters talking. One of them is named Fife, and he is talking to another man named Loop Hughes. Loop is the son of Curtis, the guy we saw in the bar just moments ago. Although Loop does not really know his dad. Loop and Fife talk about the man that just got gunned down in the street, just mere meters away from where they are. The man that got gunned down were one of their competitors, Loop says. A whole bunch of corners are going to be up for grabs. Anyway, eventually Loop takes off. Loop's driving his car, and as he's driving, another car pulls up beside him in a nice-looking convertible. There's two men with three gorgeous women around them. Loop eyes the ladies for a moment, but then they take off. While Loop is stopped in the road momentarily, a man walks over to his car. This man is Agent Graves. Graves knows Loop and refers to him by his government name. He says, Lewis Hughes. Loop, assuming Graves is a cop, tells him, Look, I already said I don't know who smoked that guy in the alley. Graves opens Loop's car door and tells him, Nice car. Loop, still thinking that Graves is a cop, is playing along. He doesn't want to get arrested for anything. Loop tells Graves, Registration's in the glove box. Graves smirks, saying, Your insurance card too, huh? Loop doesn't have insurance. He thinks that Graves is messing with him, trying to get a payout or something. Loop tells him, yo, this is bullshit. Loop says this, though, as he has a joint in his mouth. Graves grabs the joint out of Loop's mouth and tells him, you think so? Why didn't you try to hide this from me then? Loop answers, why the fuck would I hide the truth from someone who already knows it? Graves replies, you got a point. You got balls. You get them from your old man? Loop, who never knew his dad, says, I didn't get shit from that man. Graves tells him, Sure you did. You got your waste of a life from him. Loop annoyed says, Yeah, well, that's about all I got from him. Graves replies, True enough. So, let us talk about what you didn't get. I'm not gonna go into psychology bullshit about African-American young men and their lack of father figures. Frankly, I'd feel like an ass telling you something you already know. And truth be told, and I always tell the truth, that's not what I'm about. I'm Agent Graves. Graves, he then pulls out the attaché briefcase, and he opens it. Loop looks inside, he sees the gun and the hundred bullets and all these documents, and he is shocked. He says, damn! Graves tells Loop, it's yours by the way, the bullets are untraceable. You use them, nothing's connected to you, understand? In the envelope is a picture of your father, a man you've never met, but think about every day. His address, where he hangs out, everything you need to make it easy for you. 
loop questions make what easy? Graves answers, Opportunity, Loop. Opportunity. Once Graves leaves, Loop continues driving. He drives over to a 24-hour mini-market variety store. He picks up his mom at the end of her shift. She works here. Loop's mom, Miss Hughes, gets into the car with her son. They talk about their day. They also discuss the shooting that happened earlier. Loop, he then asks about his dad about how he never came around. Loop's mom to this replies, That man, Loop, your daddy wasn't no hustler, he was a thug. Loop asks, Did he hit ya? Loop's mom answers, He didn't have to. Well, not much came of this conversation about Loop's dad. Eventually, they arrive at Loop's mom's apartment, and Loop lets her out. We jump back over across town to Curtis Hughes. He is leaving Holly's bar. When he heads outside, a man in a car named Jimmy pulls up. He talks to Curtis. Jimmy works for the gangster, Nino Rego. Jimmy tells Curtis that Nino wants Curtis on a job tomorrow. See, Nino's cousin Jerry's godson is pulling this job. And the kid, he's a weightlifter. He's built like a mountain, but he's dumber than a bag of hammers. So Nino wants Curtis to go along on the job to make sure that this kid doesn't get into trouble and do some cowboy shit. Curtis asks, why was he chosen for this? Jimmy answers, because you're one scary ass when you want to be. I'll see you at Harry's at about 10.30. The two of them then part ways. Later on that night, outside of a club named Zippy Club, Loop is sitting on the hood of a car. He's staring at the photograph of Curtis that Agent Graves gave him earlier. Loop's boy, Fife, comes over to talk with him. Loop tells his friend Fife that this is a picture of his dad. Fife gives Loop some advice. He tells him, Listen up, Loop. I'm being straight with you. That dude left your mama when you was just a shorty, true? Loop admits, Yeah, that's true. Got no recollection of the man. Fife continues, Uh-huh. Yet you sitting here tripping on that picture. That's messed up, bro. That dude never had time for you. So don't waste time on that deadbeat ass tonight, all right? Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Even later that night, Loop couldn't let it go. He decides to go pay his dad a visit. He goes to his dad's apartment, and he knocks on the front door. Curtis opens the door, and Loop points a gun at his dad. Loop tells his dad, don't move. Curtis, not recognizing his son, tells him, I'm just getting my wallet, boy. It's over there in my pants on the chair. Loop tells his dad, I don't want your money. Curtis, still really cool about everything, says, oh, so that's how it's going to be. Loop, surprised by this, replies, what? What the hell is wrong with you, man? I got a gun in your face. Curtis asks, no shit. What for? Loop replies, don't you know who I am? Curtis answers, you're a piece of shit. It don't matter who you are and it never will. You're nobody to me. Loop pauses for a few moments and then replies, I'm your son. Curtis thinks on it and says, Louis? Loop continues, that's right. How'd that make you feel, old man? Curtis answers, like, blackening in your mama's eye. This is how she raised you. Loop tells his dad, I'm going to take you out. Curtis to this answers, bullshit. If that were the case, you'd have shot my ass the minute you opened the door. You don't want to kill me, son, do you? You want to know me, and you want me to know you. Fair enough. Put the gun down. You hear me? I said, put the gun down. Loop, he thinks on it, and eventually he does what his dad says, and he puts the gun down on a table. He then jokes to his dad, It's funny, huh? That being the first thing you ever told me to do. Curtis replies, It's a start. Come over here. The two of them then talk into the night. 100 Bullets, Issue 16, Hang Up on the Hang Low, Part 2 of 4. This cover artwork is pretty cool. You got Curtis and Loop in a car, and then on the reflection of the car, you see Agent Graves and some other people there. That is pretty creative, I think. About one month has passed since the last issue. Loop and his father Curtis have been hanging out. Curtis is showing his son some of the ways of the street, taking his boy while he does his rounds. 
One night, Curtis gives Loop an envelope, tells him there's $500 in it, and that is Loop's share. Loop asks his share of what? Curtis answers, look, you've been coming with me on my rounds, right? Well, my back gets paid. Curtis tells his son, though, to count the money, make sure it's all there. Loop asks his dad, what do I got to count it for? Are you going to rip me off? Curtis gives his son some advice and says, listen up, man. When a man gives you money he owes you, you count it, understand it? Count it in front of him. If it ain't all there, you hand it right back. Loop asks, then you bust up the guy for cheating you? Loop's dad answers, no, no, you don't do that. You bust up that guy, he busts you up, and then bang, someone's dead and ends up in jail. No, what you do is, you give the man a chance to make good. See, makes no difference whether he is trying to cheat you or he's just made an honest mistake. None of that shit. What matters is you getting what's coming to you. You give him an out so he can give it to you and save face. No one gets hurt, no hard feelings, you get paid. Well, after all that, Loop finally tells his dad, you're about 20 bucks short. Curtis to this replies, bullshit. Loop answers, yeah. I can't tell if Loop's joking or not, but uh, it doesn't really matter. They go into a bar. While in the bar, Curtis tells his son, so tomorrow, I thought we might go catch the baseball game. The Mets are in town. Should be a good one. Loop is not that interested in baseball. He questions baseball. Curtis replies, yeah, just you and me, father and son stuff. Curtis then goes over to a man in the bar and conducts some business. Afterwards, Curtis and Loop go outside. They talk some more about Curtis's offer of taking Loop to a baseball game. Loop says, baseball is boring and shit. Curtis replies, boring? You ever play the game? Didn't your mama ever buy you a mitt when you was a boy? Loop answers, I didn't need no mitt pops. No one played baseball in the hood. We all shot hoops. While they are doing this conversation, Curtis is hot wiring a car that it seems like they are going to steal. Eventually, Curtis successfully gets the car running. He tells his son to go drive his car while he takes this one. Curtis and Loop drive over to Nino Rego's place. Outside, that gangster Jimmy is there on the street. Jimmy asks Curtis, new car? Curtis replies, for me it is. Some fella said it wasn't worth the payments, paid me to steal it. Some sort of insurance scam. Can you move it? Jimmy answers, eh, I know somebody who can. They can sell the parts anyway. Probably fetch a couple G's for it. Curtis gives the keys to Jimmy and tells him, see what you can do. Curtis and Loop then go inside. They see the old man mob boss, Nino Rego. He's just sitting on a chair. There's also a billiards table in the room. A beautiful looking Asian woman is playing pool. Her name is Tommy Yi. While Tommy's playing pool, Nino Rego, Curtis, and Loop all talk. Curtis introduces Nino to his son, Loop. Curtis tells Nino, can you believe my boy don't like baseball? Nino to this replies, you don't like baseball? That's un-American. Curtis concurring says, I said the same freaking thing. Eventually, they start talking business. Nino tells Curtis, Curtis, I need you to do something for me tonight. There's this guy, Joey DeSanto. You've been to see him a few times. He's always got some excuse why he can't pay me. Well, I want to let him know I'm not interested in his bullshit no more. I want my money. The guy owes me 120 grand. Either he coughs it all up tonight or... Curtis answers, I'll handle it, Nino. Nino pats Curtis on his lap and tells him, Good. Loop, your father is an outstanding man. You learn from him, capiche? So, later on that night, Curtis and Loop go to pay this Joey DeSanto a visit down by his cheesesteak restaurant. Curtis and Loop knock on the restaurant door. They're closed right now, but Joey lets them in. Curtis asks, How's business, Joey? Joey answers, Business? Business is screwed. I should have had my head examined open in a cheesesteak joint. Like this city needs another one. Curtis replies, I'm sorry to hear that. Joey to this says, you Bullshit you are, you could care less. Curtis to this says, mm, Yeah, I suppose so. But I'm here for someone who does care. Joey annoyed answers, What? Freaking Nino Rego? Like hell, only thing he cares about is money. Curtis asks for the money. He says, You got it? Joey, being dismissive, replies, Not yet. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Then I'll have it and then some. He can wait one more day, right? Curtis, starting to get a little tough, says, No, he can't. 
And if you don't have the money, then I'm here to help you get it. Tonight. Joey DeSanto then pulls out a shotgun. He says, fuck you. He's gonna pump Curtis with some bullets. But then Loop pulls out his handgun and shoots Joey in his head, killing him. Curtis is shocked. He says, Jesus Christ. Curtis turns to his boy and asks, what I tell you about carrying a gun? Loop answers, you said not to. Curtis to this replies, well, good thing you didn't listen to me. Loop, a little worried, asks, please tell me he ain't dead. Curtis answers, Loop, you shot this guy in the head. Yeah, he's dead. Loop, a little distraught, says, oh man, Pops, I never killed nobody before. Curtis tells his boy, easier than it should be, isn't it? Come on, hit the register. We gotta make this look like a robbery. Man, this stupid Joey son of a bitch. What the hell was he thinking trying to shoot me? While Loop is checking the register, he finds a bag of ecstasy pills. There are a lot of these pills. While the two of them are inspecting these drugs, another gangster comes to the restaurant. The young gangster says, Yo, Joe! Not realizing that Joe is dead. Whoever this young gangster is, it seems like he had some business with Joe. Curtis tells the guy, You picked a real bad time to be visiting, young blood. The young thug replies, You think? Look, I had an appointment with that dead cracker there. Now I guess my appointment's with you. Look, I could give two shits that you wasted this guy, but seeing as you did, looks to me like what was his is yours. I got a good thing going in the suburbs, selling these pills to spoiled white kids. So we got a deal? So whoever this guy is, he was here to get these ecstasy pills. But with Joe dead, he instead makes the deal with Curtis and Loop to get the pills off of them. And it seems like they made that deal. Afterwards, Curtis tells his son that it's probably best for now he goes back to live with his mother. The two of them gotta lay low for a bit, see how this is all gonna play out. So when Loop does return to his mother's house, his mother tells him that they have some visitors. It's Loop's cousin Carlos and his girlfriend from Miami, Sophie. Carlos and Sophie were minor characters in the background of issue 8. That was the issue where Agent Graves was meeting with Lano at a restaurant. Well, apparently what happened was Agent Graves paid Lano about $2 million for a job. But when Lano left, Agent Graves strategically slipped that information to his waitress, Sophie telling her that uh, that man there, Lano, had $2 million in a briefcase. Sophie then told her boyfriend, Carlos, this information. And at some point between then and now, Carlos ran over Lano and took that money. And then Carlos and Sophie took off with that cash. And now they are in Philadelphia. And they are sitting in Loop's mother's kitchen. Carlos, sitting by Sophie, says to Loop, Yo, Loop! What's going on? We'll circle back to them in a bit. For now, we jump over to Curtis Hughes' apartment. Curtis is looking at all this newfound money he got from robbing this Joey DeSanto. Curtis eventually hears a knock at his door. He goes to see who it is. At Curtis's door is Agent Graves. Curtis says to Graves, Huh. I was wondering when you were going to crawl out of them shadows. So, why do you send my boy to kill me anyways? So it appears that Curtis and Agent Graves know each other. And Curtis seems to be aware of Agent Graves' game with the briefcase. 100 Bullets, Issue 17, Hang Up on the Hang Low, Part 3 of 4. Curtis invites Graves into his apartment. We learn through their conversation that Curtis at one point was a candidate to become one of Graves' Minutemen. Graves wanted to hire him, but someone in the trust did not want Curtis on the team. Curtis and Graves talk about Loop. Curtis says, you know, you got a seriously warped way of introducing folks. Graves to this answers, I do, don't I? Regardless, Loop had every right. Curtis asks, what, to blow me away? Graves answers, or not to. For the first time in his life, Loop was given the opportunity to make a decision about you. Curtis comments, yeah, with a gun in his hand. 
Graves continues, and a chip on his shoulder. Sound familiar? They then start talking about when Curtis was potentially hired as a Minuteman. Curtis tells Graves, Don't even try that shit with me. I was more than qualified. Graves tells Curtis, You were my best operative. But I didn't have a choice. I didn't agree with their reasons. Curtis replies, Well, you weren't screwed by them either. You still had your gig. Graves to this answers, Well, I don't anymore. Curtis, interested, asks, Huh, they screwed you too, huh? Why, because you got too old? Graves to this answers, I wish it was so understandably mundane. No, the trust decided that the very institution of the Minutemen was no longer necessary, which means were more necessary than ever. Curtis comments, so they broke up the band, huh? Can't say you didn't deserve it. Graves to this answers, I didn't deserve to die, neither did my men. And as for the band, well, I'm holding auditions. Graves tosses Curtis a picture of Curtis's son, Loop. Graves wants to potentially recruit Loop as an agent for his Minutemen. Curtis tells Graves, no. Eventually, Curtis gets a phone call. Nino Rego wants an in-person meeting to discuss what happened tonight to Joey DeSanto. Curtis says, sure, you'll come. There's not much story to tell, though. Graves, he leaves Curtis's apartment and tells him to consider what he said. The next morning, Curtis goes to talk with Nino Rego. Nino is by his billiards table, watching Tommy Yi play pool. Nino asks... So what happened last night? Curtis answers, Well, it's like I told Jimmy. Nino cuts him off and says, That you showed up at the Santos. You find him with his brains blown all over the walls and his register empty. Am I missing anything? Curtis answers, No. Nino asks, You sure? Curtis answers again, Yeah, I'm sure. So Curtis is lying about what happened the night before. He is not telling Nino about the guy that came in and paid him the money for those ecstasy pills. Curtis figures he has an opportunity here. As far as anyone else out there knows, it was just a common robbery from someone that shot and killed Joey. And that money that Joey owed, it never existed to anyone else. So Curtis might as well keep it. Nino and Curtis talk further. Nino tells Curtis, You know I'm an old man. You know how you get to be an old man? You don't make mistakes, and if you do, you learn from them. One trouble of getting old is though, you get soft. You let things slide, figure they'll work themselves out in the end. Well, this Joey DeSanto business, it didn't work itself out. And now I'm out of a significant amount of coin. So, you know that tavern? The one that that girl Holly runs that you're sweet on? Well, I've been going easy on her account, but no more. I need her to pay. I want your word that you will take care of this for me. Curtis says, You got it, Nino. Over at Loop's mother's house, Loop is talking to his cousin, Carlos. Carlos is there with his girlfriend, Sophie. Carlos and Sophie have recently come into a lot of money, although they're not telling anyone else this. However, they are spending a little bit lavishly. Sophie is showing off some new clothes she bought, as well as some fancy new shoes. And then she tells her boyfriend that she wants to go to eat somewhere fancy. Carlos kisses Sophie and says, Sure, let's go find us a five-star restaurant. Have us some filet mignon. You coming, Loop? I'm paying. Loop gets a phone call. It's his dad calling from a payphone. Loop asks his dad what's up. Curtis says he has a job tonight, one he should fly solo on. But afterwards, he asks Loop if he can drop by a tiny bar, say around 1.30. Loop says, no problem. Later that night, Curtis is at his girl's Holly's bar. He has informed Holly that Nino Rego wants his payments, and of course, Holly is unable to make them. Holly is annoyed with Nino. She says she sunk her life savings into this place. Curtis replies, well, what you'll get in insurance after you settle up with Nino? Holly jumps in and says, I'll have jack shit left after. Curtis tells Holly to calm down. She knew the risk when she went to Nino for a loan in the first place. So it looks like Holly and Curtis are planning to burn down the bar and collect the insurance money. And with that money, she will be able to pay off Nino, although she won't have a bar anymore. 
Holly questions, there's got to be something I can do. It doesn't have to be this way. Curtis, putting down her suggestions, says, Let me ask you three questions. One, you got Nino's money? Two, you ready to hit up some other loan shark to get it? Three, you willing to die for this dumb bar? Then, yeah, Holly, it does have to be this way. Go and get your purse. The two of them leave Holly's bar and head over to Curtis's car. Curtis goes into his trunk and grabs a paint can of some sort. He's going to use this to exacerbate the flames and torch the bar. Holly says she's got a few things inside she wants to grab first, but Curtis tells her, no, it all stays. It has to look like any other night. You don't leave without anything you don't normally carry with you. Just go. It's your only way out. And thank your lucky stars that you at least got one. Across town, Loop shows up at another bar. This was the bar his dad told him to meet him at. This is not Holly's place. Loop talks to the bartender and says he's supposed to meet his dad here, Curtis Hughes. The bartender replies, That's right, you're Curtis's boy. He was in earlier, said to give you this. He left a few hours ago. The bartender gives Loop a baseball glove. Loop asks, did his dad say where he was going? Back over to Holly's bar. Curtis is in the basement. He is setting up some things for an explosion to go off and for the place to go up in flames. But as Curtis is setting up, all of a sudden he hears a whole bunch of people come in from upstairs. Curtis goes back up to the bar. Holly is there, along with Nino Rego and his goons. Curtis tells them, this ain't such a good time to come in for a drink. This place is all set. One of Nino's thugs, Jimmy, he replies, Yeah, we got what, ten minutes? Plenty of time. Or none at all. Standing there in the background with Nino Rego is the guy that bought the ecstasy pills off of Curtis earlier. He knows that Curtis is the one that killed Joey DeSanto. The young thug tells Nino, Yeah, that was the old guy I saw. He was with a young one, too. Holly screaming tells Curtis, I'm sorry, Curtis. They... Curtis tells Holly, just chill, baby. You ain't gonna get hurt. The thug Jimmy, he questions, oh no, she's not. Then with a glass, he smashes it on Holly's head, breaking it. Holly falls down to the ground. Curtis tells them all, guys, insurance company ain't gonna pay no settlement to a dead lady, are they? Nino? Nino knows Curtis is right. He gives a wave to some of his men and they drag Holly away. Nino then tells Curtis that the young thug there that walked in on their robbery, well, he told them everything. A few minutes later, Loop is driving towards that bar, and while he is driving, he sees in the back of another car coming the opposite way from him, Jimmy, Nino Rego, as well as Holly, who was bleeding, grabbing at the window. Loop immediately knows something is off. He arrives at Holly's bar, he tries to run inside. Curtis is beat up profusely, but he sees his son trying to come to him. Curtis knows that the bar is rigged to explode any minute. He wants to save his son's life. So, Curtis, he lies up against the barroom door. He blocks Loop from entering. Curtis, he says, Loop, no. Loop, he's trying to open the barroom door. He's saying, Pops, get off the door. All of a sudden, the place explodes. Curtis dies in the blast and Loop gets thrown back. 100 Bullets, Issue 18, Hang Up on the Hang Low, Part 4 of 4, The Conclusion. A whole bunch of civilians and Agent Graves have arrived outside of Holly's bar. They are here to watch it go down in flames while the firefighters try to do what they can. Curtis Hughes' dead body is brought out on a stretcher in a body bag. Elsewhere, some of Nino Rego's men, like Jimmy, are with Holly. Holly is just sitting there looking depressed and shocked. Meanwhile, Jimmy is just making a sandwich for himself. All of the thugs here are discussing the fire. They want to make sure that there's no mention of arson. They want to make sure there's no issue with the insurance money. They think everything is going to go smoothly, though. They then discuss the money that Curtis stole, who was about over 100000 Where could it be? They suspect that Curtis's son, Loop, has the cash. 
For now, they're gonna watch Loop, and sooner or later, they suspect he's gonna start acting like a big shot, and they'll hear when the money shows up. Jimmy and his men head outside, and outside, they see a car they don't recognize parked in front of their building. Loop is hiding on the side of that car. Eventually, Loop's cell phone goes off. This raises the thug's suspicion, so Loop has to act. He draws the gun that Agent Graves gave him, and he mows down the various criminals here in Nino Rego's crew. Afterwards, Loop picks up his cell phone that is still ringing. On the line is Carlos with his girlfriend, Sophie. Carlos is telling Loop, You're not gonna believe this shit, man. Sophie and me, we got a suite at the Four Seasons. You gotta see this place, bro. It's totally trick. The whole nine yards. Loop tells Carlos, Listen, man, I'm busy. One of the thugs is still alive, and he tackles Loop to the ground. Loop, he pulls out his gun and shoots the guy in the head. Carlos, who's still on the phone, asks Loop, What the hell? That sounded like gunfire. Loop hangs up the phone. Loop, he then goes to head inside. The door is locked, so he shoots the lock out. Loop is strategically making his way through Nino Rego's headquarters. He heads over to the billiards table. He sees Tommy Yi still playing pool. Loop asks her, where the hell is he? Nino just casually walks out to the bar, and he sits down at a table. Loop turns his attention to Nino. He asks him, how about I put a bullet across your mind? Nino replies, way better men than you have tried, sonny boy. Loop to this says, that's so. Well, I don't see any of them standing here. Loop turns to the woman in the room, Tommy Yi. He assumes her a civilian. He tells her, yo, you gotta get your fine Chun-Li ass out of here. And yes, I appreciate Loop doing a Street Fighter reference. <laughs> Nino asks, so what is it I can do for you? Loop replies, do for me two things. First, you can tell me why you wasted my dad. And after that, you can die. While Loop was threatening Nino, he took his eyes off of Tommy Yi. Tommy, with her pool cue, swings at Loop, hitting him in the head. Nino pours himself a drink and is enjoying watching the show of Tommy Yi killing Loop. Tommy Yi kicks Loop to the ground. Loop, he's seriously injured. Tommy Yi keeps hitting him. Loop is not doing well. While Loop is struggling for his life, Nino is telling Loop all about his dad. He says, You and your father, you robbed from me. The opportunity it presented itself, you took it. No problem there. That I could live with. But when I gave Curtis a chance to make it right, he lied to my face, which meant he couldn't live. Now why would a man I trusted do that for only a hundred thousand? My guess? He did it for you, for his boy. It don't make no sense, but it makes all the sense in the world. See, when you have children, which you don't, you feel responsible for them, and you have to sometimes act irresponsibly because of them. I know this. I have children. This whole shameful incident happened because of you, understand? When it all boils down, I didn't kill your father, you did. Tommy Yi, she is just continuing to work Loop over. Loop is trying to fight back, but Tommy is such a capable fighter. She's kneeing Loop in the face, hitting him on the side of his head, kicking him in the balls. But Loop eventually gets lucky. He finds a broken bottle under the billiards table. He grabs it, and in a quick motion, he swoops around and he slits Tommy Yi's throat with it, killing her. Tommy Yi, bleeding from her throat, gets in a few more hits, but eventually she passes out and dies lying in Loop's lap. Loop, he pushes Tommy off of him, and then he heads over to Nino. He has the gun that Agent Graves gave him still. He's trying to point it at Nino, but he is so weak he can barely lift his arm. But then Holly enters the room, and Holly, she grabs Loop's arm and helps him aim. And then eventually, Loop fires, and he kills Nino. Holly walks over to Nino and spits in his face. Eventually, Loop stumbles outside, and Agent Graves is there waiting for him. Graves tells Loop, Loop! We should go. Loop says, what the hell are you doing here? Graves answers, I thought you might need a lift. Loop, motioning towards his car, says, 
Nah, this here is my ride. Graves responds, That it is, but you, my friend, are in no shape to drive, or even open the door for that matter. So eventually, Loop gets into Graves' car. They're driving. Graves asks, So, despite your appearance, things went well, I take it? Loop answers, For you? Yeah, I guess. My pops got smoked. That's what you wanted, right? Graves answers, Loop, your father never did anything to me that would make me wish him dead. Can you say the same? I never told you to kill him. I just gave you the opportunity. And it wasn't me who really got what he wanted. It was you, wasn't it? Loop answers, yeah, for too short a time, though. Graves to this says, better than nothing. As they continue driving, Loop tells Graves, I got my ass kicked. I ain't sure which hurts worse neither, know what I'm saying? The beating I took, or the knowledge that what I just did, wasting those guidos, don't mean shit. My pops is still dead. So are they. Big deal. Eventually, Graves drops Loop off. Graves tells Loop, Take care of yourself, son. Loop to this says, Agent Graves, I ain't your son. You take care of yourself, too. Elsewhere, at the Philadelphia International Airport, Lano, the Minuteman, has arrived. He is here to chase down the money that was stolen from him by Carlos and Sophie. The cab driver asks Lano, where to? Lano answers, I want to get laid, and then I want to fuck somebody. 100 Bullets, Issue 19, Epilogue for a Road Dog. This issue serves as an epilogue of sorts for the previous story arc, the Hang Up on the Hang Low. It has been a few days since the death of Curtis. Loop and his cousin Carlos go to Curtis's apartment. They are trying to see if they can find where Curtis hid the $100,000 he stole from Nino. Loop has a locker key his dad gave him that he thinks will potentially have the money although he has no idea where that locker may be. When Loop and Carlos break down the apartment room door, Agent Graves is waiting inside for them. Graves tells Carlos to wait outside. Loop tells his cousin, You heard the man. Carlos goes and waits outside, and Loop and Graves talk. Loop asks if Graves wants his gun back. Graves says, Not particularly. That does give me an idea, though. How would you like another one? Graves opens another attache case. He is offering Loop a job, a spot on the Minutemen. Loop answers, Look, I done enough killing, I ain't no gangster. Graves to this says, Well, maybe next time. Loop asks, Is that it? Graves answers, Not quite. Loop, I've arranged a small service for your father tomorrow morning. I thought you and your mother may want to attend. Loop is confused, he asks, I don't get you. Graves to this says, What's to get? Respect? Your father was too good a man to be buried in an unmarked grave on some municipal plot, alone and unmourned. It's the least I could do for him. I know a lot of things, Loop. Take the money, for instance. That's why you're here, isn't it? Loop does admit, it is. He says, I figure it's in here somewhere. The trouble is, I got no clue where here is. Loop explains that the night his pops died, his dad left him a baseball mitt, and inside the baseball mitt was a locker room key. But Loop has no idea where this locker is. He says he's been everywhere, man. He's been to 13th Street Station, down by the Greyhound, but the key works on nothing. I thought I might dig around here, maybe find something, anything. Give me some type of idea where this locker is at. Graves tells Loop, Come on, Loop. Your father gave you two keys. Loop, confused, says, No, he didn't. He just gave me the... Eventually, something clicks in Loop's brain, and he immediately leaves and tells his cousin, Let's bounce. Elsewhere, Lano is in a hotel room. He is with Sophie, Carlos's girlfriend. Lano managed to track Sophie and Carlos down, the people that stole his money from him. Lano has tied Sophie to the bed, and he's already had his way with her three or four times so far. 
Sophie, something is tied around her mouth. She's trying to scream, but she can't get anything out other than muffled noises like, mm -hmm. Lano, he taunts Sophie, saying, No lie, honey, you got one hell of a rack. Sophie replies, mm -hmm. Lano continues, Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, come on, it ain't that big. I mean, it's big, sure, but not that big. You're right, though. I do know how to use it. That shit's important to me, you know. Making you feel all of it. Goddamn earth moving. Sophie's still trying to scream, goes, mm. Lano continues, You're kidding. We done it, what, three or four times already, and you want to hit me at it again? Well, I ain't no quitter. I'm up for it. Lano is clearly unhinged and a psychopath and he is now kind of being established as one of the main villains in the 100 Bullets series. Sure, Sophie and Carlos did steal from him, but it does seem like Lano is enjoying this torture of Sophie a little bit too much. Elsewhere, Loop and Carlos go to a baseball game. This is where Loop figured out his dad most likely stashed the money. One of the few things his dad left him was a baseball glove. That was a hint of where it may be. And also, his dad did tell Loop that he wanted to take him to a game. Carlos and Loop take their seats, but then quickly Loop gets up and he goes to search for this locker that his dad may have stashed the money in. And eventually, Loop finds it. The locker has a number 216 on it. Loop finds the 216 locker. He opens it, and inside that locker, he finds the bag of money and an envelope from his dad. The letter from Loop's dad reads, Loop, what's done is past. Not nothing can change that. Best you can do is accept it, and don't let it sour your life. Don't run from it, but don't carry it around with you neither. Trust me, I did both. It's a damn way to live. I want you to know, I'm proud of you, son. Proud you had the balls to point that gun at me. And proud you thought twice before you pulled the trigger. You gave me the opportunity to meet the man you had become. And for that, I'm grateful. Now, you don't owe me jack shit, but I'd like a favor. Stay and watch the game. Maybe you'll understand something I did. It's how it's played that makes it so goddamn special. Love, your father, Curtis Hughes. And Loop, he did stay and watch the rest of that game. He never got to go to the game with his dad, but he figures at least watching the rest of this game is a good way to honor his dad. After the game, Carlos is telling Loop, Yo, Loop, for a dude who says he ain't into baseball, you sure did seem to be into the game. Loop admits to his cousin, It was alright, once you get the rhythm down. Loop and Carlos return to their car, and Loop he has the bag of cash his dad left him behind. Loop and Carlos begin driving. They talk about the money that Curtis left Loop. It is about $100,000. Not enough to retire, but it's enough to give Loop a head start on life. Loop finally asks his cousin Carlos, So, who gave you your money? Carlos plays dumb. What are you talking about? Loop continues, Don't bullshit me. Not when your ass is staying at the Four Seasons. You're living like a king. Carlos admits, What you saying, Loop? Nobody gave me shit. I made money the old-fashioned way. I stole it. Carlos and Loop return to the Four Seasons Hotel that Carlos is staying at. The one that Lana was torturing Sophie in earlier. Carlos tells Loop, Let me go grab Sophie, and then we can go get us some drinks downstairs. Sophie! Carlos goes to check in on her in the bedroom. And when Carlos enters the bedroom, he sees Sophie tied to the bed. Lano is there, hiding behind the door. Lano grabs Carlos by his neck. He tells him, Hey, Greaseball! You hit me with your car! I didn't die. But now you will. Lano does a swift punch to Carlos's throat. And with that one punch, Carlos is dead. Lano then tells Sophie, Okay, honey, here's the story. Your dead-ass boyfriend here, he was pimping your ass. He walked in on you and found you in your firm young glory getting it on with some rough trade. That would be me. And he freaked out and sold your trick. End of story. 
And no, you can't identify the man, cause he was real high. Lano then makes Sophie snort some drugs. He tells her, do it! And then when she does, he tells her, good girl. You tell the police any more than that, and guess what? You're dead. I mean, at least Lano is going to let her live. That's nice of him. Lano, he leaves the hotel room and says, Thanks for the ride. As Lano goes to leave, Loop is hiding behind the door. He has Agent Graves' gun in his hand. He's going to use it on Lano. Lano, though, is an expertly trained killer, a minute man. No way someone like Loop is going to get the jump on him. When Lano leaves the room, he swings a briefcase into Loop's abdomen, and Loop falls to the floor. Lano tells him, <laughs> You just saw me whack some punk bitch, and you think you're gonna get the drop on me? What kind of retard are you? Lano's holding Loop by the throat. He removes the gun from him. Lano looks at the gun, and realizes it is one of Agent Graves' guns. Lano tells Loop, Huh, I see. A retard with a magic gun. You son of a bitch, get up! What the hell am I to you? Tell me, what did I do to you? Lano assumes that Agent Graves gave Loop the gun to use on him. Loop scared tells Lano, Nothing, man. I ain't never seen you before. Lano says, Maybe not, but I know you've seen my picture. Now, unless you're ready to die right this second. You tell me why Graves gave you this gun and sicked you on me. Loop replies, man, he didn't. I'm serious, it wasn't you. Lano asks, well then, who was in the picture? Loop answers, my father. Lano asks, yeah, your old man screwed you over? Give me a name. I'll take care of him after I'm done with you. Loop answers, Curtis, Curtis Hughes. And he's already dead. Lano pauses. He actually knows Curtis. Curtis was almost a minute man back in the day. Lano tells Loop, Mr. Hughes, did you kill him? Loop answers, no, I killed the man that did. Lano tells Loop, let's go. They begin riding the elevator downstairs. Lano asks Loop, listen, I got some questions. I think you're lying, you're dead before we hit the lobby. Has Graves contacted you since you got the attache? Loop answers, no. Lano says, you're lying. Look, I got a score to settle with Graves, and unless you give me something... Loop, he is still holding on to the bag of money he got from his dad. He jiggles the bag. Lano looks at it. He looks inside, and he notices all the fat stacks of cash in there. Lano to this says, that's not what I meant, but uh, all right. You buying your life or Graves's? Loop, he answers, mine. Lano asks, this is all it's worth? Loop replies, it's all I got. Lano, he thinks about it and says, well, then I guess it's all it's worth. Tell you what though, if it's his life this is for, you just done something you're gonna live to regret. You picked the wrong side. Lano is pissed off at Graves because Graves was the one that in a way sicked Carlos on him earlier. So in a way, Graves was trying to get rid of Lano, and Lano does not like that. When they hit the elevator lobby finally, Lano lets Loop live, and Lano takes off with all the money. Later on, it is the day of Curtis's funeral. Loop and his mom go to pay their final respects. But as Loop and his mom are walking over to Curtis's grave, the police stop Loop. They tell him he is under arrest for the murder of Tommy Yi. Tommy Yi was the sexy Asian bodyguard woman that was playing billiards earlier. If you remember back to that fight, Loop was using Graves' gun when he killed everybody else, but not Tommy. For Tommy, he grabbed a broken bottle and slit her throat with it. The so-called magic gun with the hundred bullets would not cover Loop for that. Loop professes to the police, what? I don't even know a Tommy Yi. The cops tell Loop, I didn't say you knew her, but I will say your fingerprints are all over the broken bottle you used to slit her throat, scumbag. As the police haul Loop away, we see at Curtis's grave, 
where the ceremony is taking place. Agent Graves is there. Graves tells the cop, Another one for the good guys, eh, detective? The detective answers, I guess so. Thanks for the tip. Graves responds, Just doing my part, detective. Just doing my part. And with this, we end Volume 3 of 100 Bullets. All right, that was Volume 3 of 100 Bullets. Let me go through my thoughts on this one. I thought this story arc was another banger. Really fun stuff in here. I was intrigued to follow Lou Hughes's story and uh, seeing his relationship with his dad play out and his dad teaching him, him the ways of the street was good stuff. I like the mafia angle in here with Nino Rego uh, extorting businesses for money and uh, Curtis and Luke being sucked into it and trying to steal from this Nino. And then, of course, it leads to an epic battle. Uh, some pretty cool fight scenes with Luke taking them all down and killing this sexy Tommy Yi uh, Asian girl as well was uh, good stuff. And then uh, when uh, Curtis left the money for Loop at the baseball stadium, I thought that was some intriguing things there. And beyond that, we also had Lano coming back into the story and getting his revenge on Carlos and Sophie for stealing from him. And Lano is really built up in this volume as a despicable villain character, a really tough guy, a really scary guy. And uh, I thought that was uh, really great. And seeing Lano's interactions with Loop when they're in the elevator was really cool, too. So, uh, great stuff there. And the way this story arc ended, I thought was also intriguing, where uh, Graves offers Loop to join his crew. Loop rejects that offer, so then Graves kind of screws Loop over and uh, informs the police that uh, Loop is the one that killed this Tommy Yi, and Loop is hauled away to jail. So, uh, yeah, interesting seeing uh, Graves' motivations here. You know, what is he planning? Uh, Loop is going to be coming back into the story, so don't worry, we will, we will be seeing more of Loop, and I'm very intrigued to see him in prison in uh, the next story arc when he shows up. So yeah, this was a solid one. This is a good volume. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back in the future with volume 4.